All right, Daniel, what's happening? Um, JT, I see you. Um, Doc, I see you in one of the parties also. What's happening? JT says, greetings, big brother Mark. Little brother displayed excellence in the market this week. No losses as this is the mirror of perfection. <laughs> I love it and I can dig it. That sounded, remar that sounded remarkable. And of course, we're going to get into that. You already know that. Yep, we are going to get into that. <laughs> Out in the country. <laughs> not, not quite, but country-ish. <laughs> Got the country-ish background, yes. <laughs> It was actually just pouring down rain in like about a half hour ago, like pouring. But we good now. All right, Dan, you said he's 0-0 for the week, 10-0 for the project. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Dan, you what what market are you in? Are you on the GU? I think that you're on the GU, if I remember correctly. But just verify that for me so I can confirm. Um, also, JT, where are you for the project? When you get a moment, you can respond to that. And I know that there is a slight delay on these. So sometimes I might ask something and then by the time you'll hear it, it's like a minute later. But for those of you just joining in, um, this is the weekly recap that we do here on TA. We talk about how we you know, did during the week in our trading. Um, some of us are not actually taking trades. So we also talk about how training was for us for the week. Um, training is in my opinion, even more important than trading because the way you train will reflect your trading results <laughs> once you're in position and you begin to trade. So the way that you train and the regiment that you create is really going to dictate the level of performance that you'll experience when you actually do begin to trade. So make no mistake about that. Make no mistake about that. Um, okay, so Daniel, you in the Aussie, right? That's why I asked, because I thought that you might have been in a different market. Okay, cool. And if you guys are just coming on, um, when you come on, let me know how you did for the week, if you're taking trades. If not, let me just know um, how training was for you during the week. All right. Uh, Michael Ely, how are you, sir? Uh, Michael, how was training for you this week? I know that Michael is fairly new. I think that he joined us maybe a week, maybe two weeks ago. I don't remember exactly. JT said, I'm right where I need to be in the project. Good enough. Good enough. Uh, Michael said he's been great watching 301. Very good, Michael. 301 on repeat. That's the key. Yes, sir. Yeah, so we'll you know we'll be talking about a couple of different things um that really need to be I would say reiterated. My bag is crooked. O C D kicking in already. <laughs> Um, and Michael said also watching the charts. Okay. 
Michael, have you been able to um, to watch any of the uh, the uh, the live trainings, like the recent ones that I did? Any of the ones from this week? <clears throat> the reason I'm asking is because the you know what we cover on live training is very integral for enforcing, or I should say, reinforcing what you're learning in 301. Okay, not yet. All right, cool. And no, no, no rush. There's no rush to it. I just was wondering. I just was wondering, because when you mention watching the charts, one of the things that I talk about a lot um, is the quick glance. So the quick glance is something that enhances your understanding of 301, because it simplifies it at a very high level. Jay Carly's in the building. She said no losses and staying Team Alliance busy. <laughs> but of course. But of course. Um, th This week was a very good week for testing also. Like we did some really good tests on live training. But when I say test, and I also mean the market testing you because... The market testing your discipline and patience is something that is a forever thing. Like that's going to be an ongoing thing. Um, but I think that as you elevate and you move through training, you know, like when your regiment actually kicks in and you've created a, a comfortable pace for yourself when it comes to training, when you observe the market, the market tests you. It is going to test you based on where you at right now. So it lets you know the level of patience that you currently have. And if you're focusing on observing more and you create the right habits that go along with that, such as recording, I can't reiterate enough how important recording is. Recording is the utmost importance because when you record what you're looking at, and I don't mean recording your any trades that you're taking, I'm talking about just recording binaries, like recording when you're in observation mode and you're recording and you're looking to see how the binary looked and you know, you're wondering, man, I wonder if that was MRMH or I wonder how close we're getting to MRMH, like whatever your question might be. When you record and then you share that recording with the group, it's going to help to elevate you because whatever you might be lacking and you don't understand at the time, when we're able to see what you were looking at, we can give you the feedback that you need to elevate. That's the importance of recording. It's not just about recording when you take trades. It's recording when you're in observation. And observation and the elevation of your observation is, is something also that I've been talking about as of late. So terribly important. Uh, Ramon is in the building. He said, hold on, I just missed the comment. Hold on a second, let me come back. Ramon said, no losses here too this week, business as usual, yep. Um, Jay Carly said, it didn't occur to me that it may need to be said, but yes, make sure that y'all are keeping up with current trainings as well. Yes. The current trainings are reinforcing 301. The current trainings are reinforcing 301. Understanding the quick glance and knowing how to apply that is very important. Um, Ramon said, when you record, you learn and you elevate your skill set. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And you really accelerate the learning process. And what I mean by that is you accelerate how quickly you overcome what you don't understand. You understand what I'm saying? It's not that you speed everything up so that you can hurry up and start trading. That's not what I mean. You are going through your challenges faster. Whatever is, is actually 
something that may, pro, uh, may be prohibiting you from understanding certain things, you can push through that. When you do things like record, when you do things like, you know, um, watch the, the current trainings, it's like you start to break down all of the misunderstanding that you have and you elevate in that process. That's why it's very important to do that. Yep. Ramon said current trainers will elevate your skills quicker. Exactly. Jay Carly says she was tested this week and passed. <laughs> uh, Ramon said the elevated protocol series has been phenomenal, especially for folks that have been around for longer than a month with the team and the repetition of 301. Yes. Yes. Walker's in the building. He said, I used to record every quick glance not too long ago, in fact. Now, even my recording time has dramatically decreased since I only record when the market is visibly in the right direction. Right. Exactly. You know, and one of the one of the best habits that I find with recording that you can do is when you're observing and you're, you're applying the quick glance, just as an example, when when you see that it's next, then you can delete the recording. If you fully understand why it was next, this this is gonna take it even up to another notch. If you don't understand fully why it was next, hold on to the recording and share it in the group. Like, let us see what you're, what you're looking at. If you understand why I was next, you can delete that one because you, you understand, you got it. If you don't understand, share it. This is important, share it. This right here is, is gonna be very pivotal for a lot of you. Starting to record and then sharing your recordings when you don't understand why I was next. Okay, very important. Um, Ramon says, same here. I only record now when it is in a range showing profitable conditions. Right. See now, so these like these guys are, are more seasoned with the ability to know what they're looking at. Ramon, Joshua, um, a bunch of other people. Like I, I, I'm just thinking about people that I know record. When they record, they know what to keep and what to throw out. If you're new, you need to start recording. Like develop that habit. The same way that you're developing 301 as a habit. Recording is important once you start observing the market because you're looking, but you don't necessarily know what you're looking at yet. You're trying to understand what you're looking at. So one of the best ways to begin to understand what you saw is when we can see what you saw. That's what recording is, you see? If we're able to see what you saw, now we can give you the feedback and our feedback is going to help to elevate your understanding of what you're looking at, which makes it more efficient. It's not that it speeds everything up. It's making you more efficient with your observation process, which is of the utmost importance because that's what you're gonna need when you ultimately position yourself to start trading. You see what I'm saying? So you want your trading to be a, re a reflection of your training and your recording regimen. And they go together. So as a matter of fact, I'm going to start to, to do that more often, if not all the time. If I can always remember, I'll say it. Training and recording, they are the same. Recording is a part of your training. Get into the habit of recording. I, I cannot reiterate that enough. People in the group now, when they're questioning something, they send me a recording. I look and I'm like, nope. And as soon as I say nope, they start to tell me why I was nope. You see, so they just wanted the confirmation for me that it was nope, or, or they wanted to see what I would say. Like, you know, oh, I, I wonder if this is it. And it looked like it could have been, and I'm, I'm not sure, let me send it to them. They send it to me and I'm like, no. And I'll say no and won't say anything else, I'll wait. I'm saying no so that you can give me the feedback as to why it was no. You see, if you don't know what it, the, what, why it was no, then I can step in and I can help to guide you as to why. If you do inherently know, you'll tell me. I won't have to say nothing. <laughs> Again, this is a part of your elevation. 
This is how you guys are, are gonna be able to move through your understanding much faster. You know what I'm saying? And with more efficiency. So again, I'm gonna be reiterating that. Recording and training, they go hand in hand. You wanna develop the habit of recording the same way that you develop the habit of 301. They are the same, one and the same. You know, initially you're doing 301 on repeat and you're not really observing the market yet. I know many of you do that. But when you do begin to observe the market, you gotta start recording. You have to do that. It is going to help. Uh, Walker said 301 shifts your tendencies toward becoming productive during that time. So instead of looking at the markets while it's in a nesting condition, it's more natural to find another productive idea or goal to work on even if it's as simple as just doing chores. Very true. Very true. And he's, you know, he's talking about like the recording and the quick glance that we were just mentioning a moment ago. Uh, Ramon said, that's a good tip. Record and show it when you have a question about a certain binary that just passed by. Yes. Yes. Yeah. See, we're going to help all of you create the right habits out the gate off the rip because the right habits and the right training regimen is going to lead to the right habits when you start trading there is no doubt about that creating the right habits when you start training is like putting yourself right there in the path of gold when you begin to trade like, you see what I'm saying? You're never going to have to... It's not like you're going to start trading. Things will be happening and you don't know why they're happening. Because you went through all of that during training. And then, I mean, at the same time, it's still continuous. So even after you start trading, you're still going to be training the same way that you was training the whole time. And then your trading results and performance reflect that. You see? So it's like the results are always going to reflect... If there is a disconnect or some type of gap, you know, some some somewhere, if there's a piece missing, your results reflect that for whatever reason. Oh, man, I, you know, I, I ended up losing a trade. I don't know why I took that trade at that time. I knew better. You, so in other words, you know, why the, you know why you lost the trade. And it's important to know why you lost the trade. But if you train a certain way, what you'll do is you'll correct that habit. That's a bad habit to have. To take a trade knowing that you shouldn't be taking it is a horrible habit. And it's a difficult habit to overcome if you start it. So if you kill the, the, the desire to do that in your training regimen, you'll, you'll never do that. You just won't do it. It's not a part of your, your execution. You see what I'm saying? But you have to create that habit in the beginning. And that's what all of these things are doing. They're, they're putting you in position to create the right habits out the gate. If you've already been recording and looking and sharing with the group and getting feedback, knowing what the right timing is looking like, knowing what the wrong timing looks like, you know why you didn't take the trade. You know why there was no MRMH. If you create all of that in the beginning, by the time you start doing the project, you're doing that project one time. You're not making two and three attempts to do it. And I'm bringing that up because, you know, there have been a number of students in the group that have tried it multiple times, you know, and they're having difficulty getting past whatever the hump is. And the hump can be a, a number of different things. Like we'll talk about that. If not today, at some point, I'll, I'll just bring that up because it's important to understand like what your hump is. Whatever your hump is, is something that you can overcome through training. They put it like this. There's nothing that you can't overcome through training. Every problem you have, you suffocate through training. All of them. So th what I'm giving you now, as far as the recording, that's a big one. Because for you to tell me that your results are a certain way and I haven't seen any of your trades that you took, I don't know what you're actually looking at. I honestly don't know. I can't even give you feedback. So it's just like if you tell me, yeah, man, I got up to I got up to 15 and then I took a loss. I don't know what the 15 looked like. You see what I'm saying? 
But if you created the habit of recording, and I see every one of your trades, as you're taking your trades, you can be guided along the way. Because maybe as you're taking trades, you shouldn't even been in some of the trades. I'm not saying that that's the case, but what if that is the case? What if that's the case? What if, I, what if out of 15 trades, 11 of them you shouldn't have took? Am I making sense? So, which means it just was a matter of time before you got, it was only a matter of time because you were not looking at the market with the right set of eyes and you could have created a perception of what you thought was the right thing to be looking at and it wasn't. But again, I'm not gonna know that, no one else is gonna know that in the group if you don't record and share. If you do record and you share, we can look and see. You know, just like this past week, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, <clears throat> I didn't have any trades until Friday. I took one trade on Friday, one. For the, the rest of the week, there were no trades. Hardly any MRMHs or anything. There was a couple here and there. I'm talking about in my market. You know, I can't even speak for other markets, but I know that the GU was similar. And it probably was the same even for like the, the, the Aussie and the dollar again. I'm not saying that it was, but it could have been. The market does what it wants. We know that. Our job is to next. Next. Ne understand why we're not doing anything. So that's important, important. Let me come back up here. Um, Jamal said the lives opened my eyes to a lot this week. Yeah, definitely the the um the YouTube live stream. Yes. Uh, Rich said he's 0-0 this week. <clears throat> he said recording is a documentation of your understanding. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Recording will highlight to you if you observing the market at the right time. Bingo. And and see the thing about that is when you record, there's no debate about if it is or if it's not. The recording is there. The question is, what is your vision? What are you seeing? You see, there might be one little piece that you're not seeing, which could be the reason that it was a, it was a no. It's easy to do. It's so easy to do. The more precise that you become with your eyesight and you, you're developing that eagle eye, that eye of the tiger, just like how a tiger can see its prey from a distance and it'll still wait. It sees it right there, but it waits. It waits until the, the, the prey comes closer to it. <laughs> the tiger not trying to work hard and, 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 and wear himself out when it's time to eat. He waiting for the prey to come close. When it comes close, he just goes right and grabs it. It's right there for him. Again, the vision. He see it. He sees it. But he waits. So that's the that's the vision that I'm making reference to, you know, being able to see things that way. Um, Jamal said the right habits stay active because of active training. <laughs> However, oh, this is hard. This is hard. Listen to what he said. He said, however, the lack of the right active training can cause the wrong habits. This happens. This happens. <clears throat> we wanna make sure that it's not gonna happen with you though. So understand that that's what all of this is for. That's why we do, like, it's just like when I started doing the recaps. When I thought about it, I'm like, we gotta do recap too. Cause we gotta talk about what we did in the, during the week. Notice all of this is again to reflect on what we've done and what we've seen, right? So we need to have that incorporated into the way that we're training also. 301 on repeat and recording. They gotta be, the, they have to go together. Recording is a part of observation. When you start looking at the market, you need to start recording. You have to develop that habit because when you share those recordings in the group, that's when you get the feedback that you need to verify if your eagle eye is being developed properly. There could be something that you just not seeing for whatever the reason is. 
And we like, you know, we give you the feedback. We're like, nah, that, that wasn't it. And you're like, why? Why wasn't that it? No, did, did you see how it bursted right there? Oh, that's right. You might have been ignoring a speed burst that you that you keep seeing. Everything else looks good, but there, it's, it's a burst that's there. That one burst is letting you know it's not stable yet. But because you created the habit of accepting that little burst, you yesing when you should be knowing. That's a small little thing, but it becomes a big thing. You see what I'm saying? That becomes a big thing. That's how you, you know, that might be the reason that you went 15, 16 and 0 and then lost. Because that caught up to you. I'm just giving you an example. So we want to make sure that the level of precision with what we do within our training regimen is at the peak. Peak performance. Training has to be at peak performance properly. And then that will be what your trading results are going to reflect and your performance. That's what that's what happens. This is hard, man. Um, Shawnee said another great week training and trading two and no crisp and clean week overall snowball going down here. Momentum keeps building. Business as usual. <laughs> Business as usual. Shiny's a good example to use of how when you create the right habits and, and you develop discipline and patience, you don't do nothing except that. I forgot how many weeks um, Shiny had completed the project and then he went. Shiny, how many? Uh, let me know how many weeks it was before you, you actually took a trade after the project was done. Now, mind you, it's like, well, OK. But why didn't he take a trade? There was no trade for him to take. You see what I'm saying? That's discipline. He can't even help that. Why he can't help that? All the time that he spent developing and working on the discipline through training has him there now. He don't have to try to be disciplined. He can't not be disciplined if he tried. It's second nature. He created it as his first nature through training. Jelani's another example. These are di these are like discipline heads. Is it worth it? Yeah, they're not losing and they're not gonna lose. <laughs> so it's like, which way do you want to go? You want to you want to keep starting and re and and starting over. You know what I'm saying? You lose and then you have to start over. No, we don't have to lose at all. Matter of fact, we're not going to lose at all. If we keep the training at peak performance, the training got to be at peak. And then that's what the trading results are going to reflect, period. Not, oh, it may reflect that. No, it, that's what it's going to reflect, period. Four weeks. And so after he finished the project, he didn't take a trade for four weeks. Not rushing. Not complaining about it. Oh, I, I just finished the project, but damn, I ain't get a trade yet, man. Oh, man. Nope. Just wait. <laughs> he said discipline automatic. We not losing ever. Come on, man. Come on, man. Jamal said, eagle eye or ego. <laughs> I see the nuggets is coming. <laughs> I see the nuggets is coming. Let me make sure I'm not missing nothing in this other thing over here. Um, oh, let me come back. I missed some comments here. Jay Carly said, the thing I love about recordings that we are sent 
oh, that are sent to me and the recordings I send to Mark, we knew the answer before we sent them. Yes, even I still send Mark recordings. Then he pauses. Then I tell him why it's a yes or a no. Yes. Yes, she does send me recordings all the time. Uh, Ramon said also new folks got to understand that the market may not show often the stable conditions we are looking for due to how volatile times have been due to COVID. So don't think that it doesn't happen that. Yeah. Oh, man. We got to talk about that a little bit. We got to talk about that. About thinking that it's going to last forever. We got to talk about that. Um. He said, don't think that it doesn't happen as often as you think. You just got to be extra patient with it. It will give you the permission when it is ready to give it to you. <laughs> What's up, Stacy? She's talking about 99 and 0. <laughs> Stacy, how, how'd you do this week? How was um training? Is it 99 and 0 in your head? <laughs> Um, Jay Carly said, also check your attitude at the login. You take your attitude to the market, it's gonna hand you some act right. You ain't never lied. Um, Jay Carly said, the lives are getting ridiculous. So much knowledge and elevation. Some days it's almost too much. Yeah, the, the, the lives are, are very incredible. <laughs> yeah, Jamal with them with them bangers. Oh, that's hard. And you know, you know that, that that's not what I said, but I like that. I said yes and when you should be knowing. And you said yes and when you should be knowing. That's hard. <laughs> that's hard. Flip that, right? Um, Ramon said, I'm not planning on going. Oh, excuse me. I'm not planning or going to start all over ever again. When we start all over, it's because we created the wrong habits for that to even happen in the first place. Come on, man. Come on. See, I would rather. I would rather not be trading at all. Knowing that. I'm working through the development of the habit of precision. I need to know that the execution of my observation is so solid that I'm never going to lose a trade. This is a key point. The execution of your observation is so solid, you know that it's not possible to lose a trade. It's not possible because you're never going to see the market say yes when it's saying no. You're going to see the market for what it is. If the market is saying no, it's no. Even the, even the, is not quite there yet, is no. Not quite there yet is no. Not, not quite there yet is not, oh, maybe I could take that one. You understand? Like, it, it's binary. It's either yes or no. You learning how not to ever Put yourself in the position where you're you're making a decision to deviate. Oh, it's almost there. Maybe I could do that. That's deviation right there. No, the market said no. The market didn't say maybe. It said no. If it ain't yes, it's no. And the more that you learn how to develop that, when it comes to creating and reinforcing your habits you're working on your habits before you start working on actually trading 
And I think that that's more important. It's more important that you elevate and you stay where you need to be until the, 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 the execution of your observation is so on point that you just will never take a trade at the wrong time. You make it impossible to take a trade at the wrong time. Mind you, this is observation we're talking about. This is not, this is not trading yet. Because remember, we don't even take trades anyway. We're not even taking trades. We waiting for trades to come. <laughs> How do you know when the trade comes if you are not observing the market properly? How do you know what? How, how how do you know when the trade comes? You're not even seeing the market right. You still in the frame of mind of a good trade when there's no such thing. We don't care nothing about a good trade. We all we are concerned about is the market saying yes. If the market says yes and then it gives us a trade, it's a trade. That was given to us, not one that we had to take by force. We not you 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 not taking nothing from the market. The market giveth and the market taketh. So we just position ourselves so we don't ever get took. We just receive the gift. Observation and the execution of the observation with precision. Before you thinking about Project 21, before you start thinking about trading, the execution of your observation with precision. <laughs> Jay Carly said, that's exactly where I'm at. I haven't taken many trades this year, but the amount of work I've done is insane. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm telling you that don't think for a second that that's not going to pay off. You don't realize to what degree that's, that's going to pay off when the time comes. You don't even know yet. You have no idea yet. And I'm telling you what's going to happen. You know, like like people think all, you know, like larger contract sizes is, is, is like something that's out of reach. When you train and you create these right habits and it's a part of you and it's a part of how you move don't you realize like how efficiently all the trades that you take will, will be clear winners textbook trades that you're getting into because you're able to identify the right time to be in a trade in the market and then you wait for the trade to come and you don't do nothing else that's all you do you're not even concerned about the amount of time in between the trades. The amount of time in between trades might be a week or two. You don't even care. Then when the, then when the market becomes generous and is giving you three, four trades, you took them all. And they were all textbook trades because they have the textbook timing because you know to wait for that and don't do nothing else. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, like, you know, during the periods where the market is saying no all week, it's no all week, and you respect that, and there's no all week for you. Well, how many trades you have this week? I have none. You ain't trade this week? No, the market said no all week. Huh? People have messaged me um, telling me about how they started the project and then, you know, they got to a point where they lost. Again, recording. I need to see what you're actually doing. You don't want to create a bad habit where the trades that you're taking, the trades you shouldn't even been taking in the first place. But you got away with them, so you repeated that until it caught up to you and you took the loss. That's a hard pill to swallow, right? But it's a necessary one for you to hear. You may have created the wrong habits. And we need to correct that before you start over and do the same thing again. Record. 
got to record. I need to see what you're doing. We need to see what you're doing. You know, you may you may come to realize, oh, man, I was doing that on, on most of them. Yeah. And it's something that you shouldn't have been doing at all. But you didn't know that because you were under the impression that your perception of what you thought that you were seeing was right. And it wasn't. And like I said, it could be something small. All it takes is a little, a little pin pro to deflate a tire. That tire got a little ass hole in it. That tire will be flat eventually. Not at first. You might be able to go from New York to New Jersey, but by, but by the time you get to Delaware, your shit is flat. And you headed to Florida. Oh, right, well, I got through New York and New Jersey just fine. When I got to Delaware, for some reason, I had a flat. Your tire had a hole in it. <laughs> this is important, man. This is important. Uh, Rich said it's better to have a slow start than a false start. <laughs> when you see a yes, you'll know. Um, Shani said, indeed, Mark, you said it. The execution of your observation, that is everything right there. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, JT must depart from my evening affairs. Bid you all to do. All right, JT. Um, which the work now equates to future received trades. Yes. Um, Shani, personally, my execution of observation is a big part of the elevation for myself. The trades I take now are blowout wins. None of that, man, that was close shit. Come on now. Come on, man, talk about it. That's what I'm talking about. And just imagine yourself only taking those trades. And let me rephrase, imagine yourself only receiving those trades because it's a gift from the market. You don't even got to take it. Just receive it. <laughs> Just imagine yourself, like visualize yourself only receiving that. That's what comes as a result of the training regiment, man. I'm telling you. Stacy said training was lit this week. Yep. Yep. I don't know what's happening. Uh, Ramon said nobody will ever finish Project 21 playing around with the market. The market won't let you get that far without you learning your lesson about who's the real boss. And remember that the market is in the business of exposing you. <laughs> the market inherently exposes you. It lets you know that you're not on the same page with it. How do you know that? Because you lost. That's how you know. The market, the market lets you know every reason why not. And if you insist on doing in spite of that, market is like, hey, I told you. I don't know what you, I don't know why you over here. You better relax and next it. And you, instead of you nexting it, you trying to take it? No. We not doing that. Jay Carly said, you can have a winning streak and upwards of 21 and 0. You'll realize it's a streak at 22, 24, 27, and then what? Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. What's happening, Patty? Joshua said, can't build a ship with cracks in the hull. Has to be watertight. <laughs> Hard. Uh, Ramon, that's when outside people get it wrong when they talk to us. You don't take trades in the market because 
you want to or you have to. You receive trades when the market lets you have a winning trade. If the market wants to be acting all crazy for a week or two, you let the market be or be prepared to be slapped. <laughs> Woo. That's it, yo. That is so true, Ramon. One funny thing about that too is that sometimes when people come into training during a time where the market is, is doing that. The market is just doing what it wants to do for a couple of weeks or whatever the case may be. Somebody comes into training and they're like, well, I haven't seen the trade since I've been here. How long have you been here? I started about three weeks ago. Guess what? You came right at the time when the market is not doing anything as far as trade yet. Some of them, what they'll do is they'll take that as, oh, well, nah, this is too slow, right? This is this is too slow. I can't do this. I, I, I need trades. I can't. They start panicking and they feel like, oh, well, we ain't never going to get into no trade. I ain't never going to get into a trade. So many times I've seen people leave that following week, three, four trades come. And then we talk about it on the recap. And it's like, if you miss the dynamic of what the market does, which is whatever it wants to do, you are going to be bullied indefinitely, like, like as in forever. You always gonna be bullied by the market because you never accepted the fact that the market does what it wants and that we're only moving in a way where we co we're cooperating with whatever the market decides, whether it's yes or no. People make this assumption for whatever reason that because they're trading, they're supposed to get market uh, trades on a schedule. Oh, well, you know, one or two a day, one or two a day. What if the market don't give you shit for two weeks? Well, huh? What what you mean? No, there, there no, there's always trades. You you right, there are always trades. But we're not talking about trades. We talking about wins. Clear winners. The ones that Shiny was talking about. None of that oh that one was close shit. Like you said. None of those. We ain't talking about those. Clear winners. Market looking beautiful. <laughs> Gifts. That's what we're talking about. So it's like understanding that that's what we are waiting for because that's what is creating a career path. Winning streak is, is not a career path for you. Winning streak is exactly that. It's a streak until you lose. We on a career path of winning. Come on, man. What we do hit different altogether. It hits different. That's why when somebody, you know, when it doesn't click for them that that's what we're doing, they're going to leave anyway. And they're going to miss out on the best opportunity that they've ever had to actually become a consistently profitable trader. You're not going to be able to do this nowhere else. Nobody understands and rocks with the market like we do. People don't even have respect for the market. Your strategy is disrespectful to the market. Yo, you got a strategy? That shit is disrespectful. Mark is like, I don't give a shit about your strategy. You better find a new one. Here, let me do this. Let me let me kill your strategy real quick. I'm gonna switch up on you. Now you gotta get another strategy. How about that? Come on. People are disrespectful in the market, man. <laughs> and we're not. Respect, respect gets you far. J. Carly said, gotta pass the tie to get with to get where you're going. Come on, man. Come on. Walker said, Project 21 is an aircraft carrier. Habits have to be watertight. Joel 2 or no. 
Joel is another one that, that sends me videos For the record He sends me videos On the regular <clears throat> uh, Ramon, successful traders don't take trades daily Successful traders take trades strategically When the conditions are right to maximize their trades and guarantee their profits. <laughs> come on with it, Ramon. He said, and they know that it will come whenever it happens. That could be in a week, a month, or months from now. Exactly. Ramon said, all of that by reading the dynamic of the market, like you said. Yes. Yes. 100%. <laughs> J. Carter said, yeah, S word is disrespectful. It is. Like, I, I've come to realize that. It's like you saying or claiming that you got a strategy, like some some magical formula that you figured out works a certain percentage of the time. It's it's silly and disrespectful to the market. Like I'm 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 speaking from the way that the market looks at things. Cause the market is is the king. Market is like, get that shit out of here. Like you really think you're gonna you really think you're gonna take what you want with that? <laughs> then the market do all type of shit on you and you're like, oh, oh, I'm not sure what that was, man. Damn, it came out of nowhere. Yeah, market doing something different now. You ain't figured out what it is yet. It's it killed your pattern and it got a new pattern now. Silliness. Um, Jamal, observation is the foundation for which the house of trading is built on. Behavior, environment, and framework is in the house. 301 is, is the business by which it flows. Listen to your peer. It will tell you how to build. Good stuff. Shani said, this is not spot Forex futures or equities. We really have to wait for the market to give it up. Um, yes, Mark, it's a gift we receive from the market. That's right. And guess and see the 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 key to that, and I say this all the time, and I say it with so much like enthusiasm. The market is never wrong. <laughs> like you don't realize how much of a gem that is. That is gold. The market is never wrong. No matter what. Oh, I lost that one in two seconds. I'm called the Nadex. You you was in a trade that was a, a almost a close call or whatever, and you trying to figure out why. Nah, market ain't never wrong. Market was doing what it was doing already. You either didn't see it or you didn't respect it or you figured you can get away with this one this time. Whatever, it don't matter. The market said no. Oh, I'm gonna try to catch the MRMH. Okay. You can go. You go ahead. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> and everybody else looking at you like, yo, you better relax. <laughs> you gonna try to catch the MRMH? All right, all right, player. <laughs> See, because there's a there's kind of like a, a level just saying that there's a level of like audacity a little bit. Because you don't have the there's no need to try to catch the MRMH. You don't have to do that. The purpose of the MRMH is to help to protect you from all the stuff the market's capable of doing. So just like the example I used a minute ago. Oh, look Look what it did in the last three seconds. Yeah, that's called the timing of behavior. But guess what? You ain't having MRMH to begin with. You shouldn't even been in that trade. Uh-oh. You're getting Bill Duked real quick. Like, you know, you know you're fucked up, right? You know that, right? <laughs> Margaret is talking to you. <clears throat> Shani said, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm just so excited about TA. Two years in and my enthusiasm for this is as high 
as ever. Just a blessing. Sounds corny, but it's true, y'all. I know the feeling. It, it, the feeling is awesome, man. It really is. Um, Demol says strategies work a percentage of the time. Skill set works all the time. Oof. When done at the right time. <laughs> Let me say that again. Strategies work a percentage of the time. Skill set works all the time when done at the right time. <laughs> That's hard right there. That was hard. What's up, Tracy? <laughs> Jay Carter says she don't even like strategically. <laughs> I knew she was going to say something, too. I knew that she was going to say something about that. That is hilarious. Um, Jay, Jay Carly said, what? Hold on. What career allows you to take what you want? I'll wait. She ain't lying. <clears throat> Ramon, before COVID, hey fam, I got the strategy for the market. COVID-19, get that shit out of here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ramon, Ramon asking you for forgiveness for using the S word, Jay Carly. <laughs> Yo, she got her o her OCD shit is up for for that S word, right? She be she be on it. Um, Jay Carly said, "Please send me all the videos of you catching the MRMH." You remember what I said about recording too? Like that is important. That's a part of training. I'm gonna take it there. Recording is a part of training. That's a that's a part of your training regimen. <clears throat> 301 on repeat, when you begin to observe, if you are, if you got the charts open, the platform up or whatever on your phone, get the recording app on your phone. If you want a laptop, get Screencast-O-Matic on your laptop. And you need to get into the habit of recording. Record, 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 record. That's part of training, period. And you do that, you, gonna, you, you are not going to be able to go wrong. Um, Jamal said, you must know the right time, not the right time. I caught that immediately. <laughs> I caught that. Gregory, what's up, man? What's good with you, bro? <laughs> Ronald said, what, what did 50 Cent do when he got hungry? 58. That's That's funny. <laughs> 58 <laughs> Oh man Got jokes huh Yeah but I mean Just more of the same man More of the same like elevation <clears throat> Is something that is going to happen Because of the way that you move in your regimen. You want to create a solid training regimen out the gate. Recording is part of that when you begin to do observation. 301 on repeat definitely is part of that. That's the first thing that you ever do before you start moving and doing anything else. <laughs> Um, I'm well Kane Just haven't been on one of your lives In a long ass time I know <laughs> I know Been a minute But it's good to see you man um, Sheree Hey are you Are you trading currency Or crypto um, these, This is Forex <clears throat> It's actually binary options Which is um, On the Forex market The platform is called Nadex N-A-D-E-X Jamal, you like that 50 cent joke? That, that was funny, huh? 
<laughs> he said, what did 50 Cent do when he got hungry? 58. <laughs> That's a dad joke, for real. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, y'all are nuts. Y'all are nuts. Um, this Forex as well. P six hundred loafing. P six hundred loading. What's what's P six hundred? What's that? Uh, Jamal said people think it's time clockwise Not realizing it is time behavior and environment wise Right Which transcends time And we talk about that all the time We actually talk about that Environment and behavior in the market transcends time That's why when the market is stable and it positions itself and it sinks up on the platform, you win all your trades. Because of that, it is transcending time. Yep. Elevation. Chevrolet, what's up? Um, Chevrolet, did you want to say anything? I know that, that you and I have been talking, but I'm not sure if you want to share that on here. But if you know, if you do, all right. So you you want me to share it with everybody, or no? You let me know. I think that you should, but I'm not going to force you to. All right, well, she's sharing it. Okay. All right, so, and and I actually had mentioned this to Jake. Well, no, I didn't mention it to Jay Carley. I told Sherilyn to mention it to Jay Carley, but I'm, I'm actually glad that you came on because we could just talk about it collectively real quick. But Sherilyn has um been attempting Project 21. And actually, some of the things that I was saying today was motivated behind what she told me about what she's been doing. So... Um, is this going to be what you, you did? You try it three times already. Is that what you told me, Sherilyn? But basically, she tried. I think that she tried Project Twenty One three times so far, and every time she gets to twelve trades, she loses. Every time she gets to twelve trades, she loses. Now let's talk about that. Let's talk about it. I know I know Jay Carly got something to say because literally she experienced this literally and I'm not sure who else might have but never said anything but this is something that we definitely got to talk about we got to talk about it um off the rip the first thing that I said to her was that it's in your it's in first of all it's in your head that is in your head it's a psychological barrier that you have and what it's doing is it's literally lining up exactly when you get to the 12th trade for whatever the reason is it could be because the first time that you tried it you got to 12 and then took the hit so when you repeated it again every time you get to 12 you deviate on some level and you take the hit but again it could also be that even the trades that you're winning are not trades that you should be in. And coincidentally, it's catching up to you on the 12th trade. I'm just laying out different scenarios. But it's definitely not a coincidence, for one. And two, if you're losing, you're deviating. So that's why we have to talk through it. Jay Carter said the curse is in your head. And that's exactly what she called it too before the curse. <laughs> it's crazy. 
That's in your head though. That is in your head. Um, look at what Joel said. I record all my MRMH and send it to Mark. And yes, he does. Ramon said he's lost several times on different number of trades. Um, Sherilyn is saying that she doesn't feel like she's deviating. Again, Sherilyn, I, if I don't see what you're doing, if we collectively can't see what you're doing, then you, we can't give you feedback on what you might be looking at. We need to see what you're doing. And mind you, you're in the Euro dollar, correct? Is that right, Sherilyn? Uh, Rich said maybe you're missing something, Ramon. Uh, recording is definitely going to point out the cause of it. Yep. Rich said maybe it's not deviation in your understanding of it all. And she said this time she's going to record. And yes, you trade the euro. Okay. So like, I, let me just give you an example. I'm in the euro. How many trades did you take this week? Before before the loss, and what day was the did you take the loss on? Because because just this information alone will give some insight. You took 11 trades this week? I want to know what you took this week. She says she's taking a look. Ramon said, remember that our journey don't have a specific date we're going to reach it. We will all reach our goal at the right time when our knowledge of the protocol and our observation of the market are equal and there are no mistakes about what we do. Facts. That is a fact. Uh, Rich, the skill we're learning is so dope that you should, or excuse me, you could get to that amount of trades just based off having a 1% knowledge of it, but that is not the skill. Correct. Correct. You, you you know you you could win through osmosis, but the but osmosis of it is not it. It's it's just a level of it, and you want to um, secure the skill set. Period. Um, Rich said 11 in a week That's fast and edgy Not slow and steady Some like that Yep um, Jay Carter You gotta train it out My advice is to stop Train 301 fully focused Views And then paper trade 5 and 0 at least Shake that shit out I swear by this on my life. Um, of course, you don't feel like you're deviating, but you are if you took the L, period. That's my thing. Shawnee, tough pill to swallow to build a count up to a thousand and then lose. Look at it like you lost a hundred because that's what you did. Remember, there's no deadline to complete 21. The deadline is imaginary, period. Um, Jay Carly, I bet that there is one thing that you're doing that you think is right and is wrong and you keep doing it. We're going to work through it, though. 
Um, she said she tore the papers, was so pissed, started this one on the 7th. So you started the last one on May 7th? When, when did you lose? When did you lose, Chevron, the, the, this third time? Yeah, and I'm going to go into that. Jay Carly said, it. I'm in the EU. I took one trade this week. And the trade I took was, yes, was yesterday, Friday. So you lost Thursday. So prior to you losing Thursday, how many trades did you have from Sunday of this week? So from Sunday of this week to Thursday, how many trades did you have this week? The third at 8.35, what? I'm not sure what you mean, what you talking about? You said third at 8.35. I'm not sure what you mean by that. But let me ask the, Let me ask what I'm asking again. From Sunday until Thursday of this week, how many trades did you take? Um, Tracy, there weren't that many EU trades this week, no. No, I mean, I think for the EU this week, MRMH is that I observed personally, it might've been two. And the ones I saw, I posted in the group. So that's why I'm curious to know. And I did, I really didn't even want to say nothing yet. I wanted to wait for her to respond to that. Um, Jamal says, stop doing project 21, just trade and you will realize that you have done Project 21. Check your emotional status at number 12. If you do not have peace, do not take the trade. If you have peace, do not take the trade. Take the trade in the no, which will keep you in the peace. That was a little deep. Take cards that I've taken 19 trades this whole year. Oh, she said 20 trades. Right, for the year. Okay, so you so you took three trades this week from Sunday to Thursday. If I'm reading that correctly. And then Thursday, you, the one you lost was at 8.35 a.m.? Is that why you keep putting 8.35? You lost at 8.35 a.m. or p.m.? <laughs> p.m., okay. Okay. Of the three trades that you took, how, how many times did you have MRMH before that? And let me rephrase it just so I can be more specific. Did you have MRMH before you took each one of those trades? Or are you just taking the trades based off of your understanding of the protocol? And I'm doing this just to get some insight into what your, your thought process is before you take a trade.
Um, she said, I took one Wednesday evening and two early Thursday a.m. Always take them after MRMH. Okay. So, so based on that, what you're telling me is that you had three MRMHs and that all of the trades you took were follow-throughs. And like at 1 to 4 a.m. Okay, so it sounds like you up in the middle of the night too. All right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Ramon said, um, now on you can share the MR matrix that you see with the group or with me to double check that they're accurate. Yeah, so um, Sherilyn, you already confirmed that you're going to start recording, right? And that's really, you know, like th this is not even a, a real issue. It's really just a matter of ironing out the wrinkles. The fact that you're going it alone it's easy to not see certain things in the market that you're doing when you've created the habit of doing it. And just from the sound of it, that's what it sounds like you've done. You've just created habitual things. But what recording is gonna allow us to do is to verify whether or not what you're seeing is what you should be acting upon in the first place. So that's going to be the way that we get we get you to where you need to be and recording is a habit that everybody should be creating period got to do that and and Chevrolet, not just the trades record the mrmh i want to see the mrmh that you see recorded and then i want to see the trade that you took recorded that's what i need you to do Okay. Starting this week, starting on Sunday. And I'm not going to tell you not to trade and not to do anything. I want you to do what you've been doing. But this time we're going to record and we're going to, you know, take a look and, and verify everything that you're doing. So we're going to be good to go. So also, and you know, this is great because if Chevrolet is doing that, somebody else is doing it. So, you know, whether someone is watching the replay of this or whatever the case may be, understand what I'm saying about recording. It is important. It is not just important, it's imperative. You gotta do it. If you're not recording, you are missing out on what could potentially be the, the very thing that is going to interrupt your, your flow at some point. You don't know when it's gonna happen, but whatever you're doing, if it is not creating the precision of observ observation in the market at a high level, at the peak performance, your, your, your results will not reflect peak performance. It's something that you're gonna be doing It's something that you're going to be doing. Yes. J. Carly said, you're about to see what you're made of. I'm proud of you for coming forward. Absolutely. And this is, see, this is what I'm talking about as far as not being selfish and I, I definitely do appreciate the fact that you shared, Sherilyn. You know, I, I gave you the option to not share because some people don't want to, but you did. And that was very selfless because this is going to help a bunch of other people. This will stop people from, from doing no recording. And at the same time, people that are not recording are going to see this and they're going to be like, oh, damn, maybe I should start recording, too. Maybe that maybe I'm doing that, too. You know what I mean? So we don't know yet, but I know that somebody is going to be affected by the fact that you shared. You know, the same way that 
you kind of are stopping somebody from elevating by not sharing. So I appreciate that. Definitely. Uh, Ramon said, maybe there are certain nuances that you are overlooking in the habit of looking for the MRMHs. Certain hints like little speed burst gaps in the market may be overlooked once you see a binary set up. But it was not watched from the 130 all the way down. Correct. Correct. He said, I've done that. And those have been past causes of losses. Yep. Um, Cheryl has said, thank you all for your input and support. Of course. Of course. That's why we're here, man. That's why we're here. Most said we're getting to the same goal together. No man, woman left behind. You already know what it is. Um, Sherilyn's crazy. I was fine the first time. The second time, a little pissed. The third time, screaming. <laughs> Shit, I'll be screaming too. I'll be screaming. But I'm glad that you... Um, I'm glad that you are bold enough and humble enough at the same time. Because it takes humility to know, like, all right, I keep doing this. There's something wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you have the self-awareness to know, all right, there's something wrong. What the hell? Is the, that 12 trade? That shit is coincidence. It ain't a curse. It ain't, you know, well, why 12? How come all, all the ones before 12 is good and then I get to 12 and I lose? It's not that. It's just the way that you the way that the things going on with you actually draw things to you. Like, it, I, I kid you not. That part right there is probably literally you, you just know that you lost the first time on tw on trade number 12. And then when you got there the second time, you drew that shit to you again. You got there the third time. You did it again. <laughs> this is how powerful our thoughts are. We draw shit to us. It's crazy. It's crazy. But yeah, man, you shared it. We're gonna get we're gonna get you right. And other folks too that have not come forth. Some of y'all need to confess. <laughs> All y'all sinners need to confess. <laughs> confess, you sinners. <laughs> J. Carr said there have been others that thought that they were seeing MRMH and it wasn't. Small adjustment probably just needs to be made. Yeah. It happens. Don't think that it can't happen to you. It happens. It happens. Um, Jamal, too many trades in one week can cause blinders. You already know. Yep, Jamal said, remember to slow down. J. Carly said, Jamal, your elevation is blowing my mind right now, just even over the last three weeks. Love it. Yep. Yep. When we when we when we point the laser, that's when we elevate. You know what I'm saying? Like <sighs> Sherilyn said exactly. <laughs> she said, what the hell? Three time not a charm. Something just plain wrong, right? <laughs> and it's all good, man. It's all good. I mean, see, like, all this is for us is one and oh forever. Like, that's it. And one and oh forever means that the one and oh is what the market gave us. Every time is what the market has given us, not what we're trying to take. You know, not what we're trying to force our way into. No, it's what the market is giving us. Market, market is only going to give us the best. Anything less than the best is taken. It ain't given. <laughs> Ramon, the best thing you've done is talked about it with the group so we can help you out overcome this mental skill set barrier. He said, my curse was surpassed in a $400 balance before, and I overcame that mental barrier a long time ago with TA. Repetition of the protocol will break all of those walls. Come on, man. We said that earlier. We said that earlier, man. The way we overcome everything is the repetition of training. That's it. That's it. That's how we always going to move. That's why it'd be so funny to me when people ask if I still train. I'm like, are you kidding? 
Like that you got that has to be a joke, right? Come on, man. You think Floyd was training before every fight? Or he just sat back and was like, nah, I'm good, I got this. No. He outtrained his opponent. Even though he was already better than them, he still outtrained them. Come on, man. All right, y'all. I think that'll do it. So, Cheryl and, you know, stay close to the fire. Hit me with them recordings. Put them in the group wherever. You know, share them in the group. Hit me with them however you want to do it. But I want to see the recordings of the MRMHs and the recordings of the trades. All right, we're going to get you right. All right, y'all. We out on the recap. I see y'all in training to, well, what, what's this Memorial Day, right? I don't even know when the market opened back up. Might be Monday night, maybe, I don't know. But I see y'all when the market opens back up. All right? Love, peace, and soul.